while browsing online I often see pretty, let's say not great PC gaming takes from AMD's got terrible drivers to old hardware is basically e-waste. So I thought I'd make this video today debunking these old PC gaming myths and people still believe these so I feel like it's kind of my duty to make this video just debunking them and just setting it straight I suppose. So let's get straight into it. Coming in hot with the AMD drivers are bad myth. This is one I'll probably see the most online and it's probably the most incorrect one. This is because AMD drivers are totally fine in 2024, but people still believe that they crash and they're just unreliable. This was the case about eight years ago, but in 2024, AMD Radeon cards are some of the most reliable on the market. I've tested probably about I'd like to say around 20 AMD Radeon cards in the past sort of couple of years and I've literally run into zero issues. Granted, I haven't daily driven one for about four or five years, but both my brothers do daily drive a 7600 XT and a 5700 XT respectively and they've absolutely had zero issues with their gaming PCs and trust me I'd be the first person to know because it'll definitely be coming to me saying that they've got problems. So if you think AMD graphics cards are woefully unreliable and Nvidia GeForce products are the only reliable graphics cards in 2024 you couldn't be any more wrong and it's like I see these people on TikTok all the time saying yeah Nvidia good AMD bad and that is just definitely not the case in 2024. And the fact that AMD finally got on top of their drivers around four years ago is a great thing for PC gaming because after all, if AMD are producing great value graphics cards with reliable drivers, which they are, this is because it will keep Nvidia on their toes, making sure prices are a bit more competitive. So at the end of the day, Radeon drivers are certainly reliable and if you wanted to pick up an AMD graphics card for gaming, they're an excellent choice. Moving to Team Blue, particularly with Intel Arc, and this is basically the same story as the AMD drivers, but to a greater extent. When Intel Arc graphics cards originally launched in 2022, yes, they were actually not very stable and they weren't very good, to be honest. But after about 18 months of driver development, Intel Arc graphics cards are some of the best value GPUs on the market today. And I can say firsthand that Arc graphics cards are indeed reliable. I would know because I've been running one in my editing PC for five months now and I've had no issues at all, particularly with video editing. And I did run into one gaming problem where Assassin's Creed Origins did have a bit of a lighting bug but that was fixed in a driver update along with some hefty performance improvements as well. So for the most part, I think Intel Arc has been absolutely brilliant and stable. I think the route to the misconceptions that people have got around Arc GPUs is the day one reviews. As I said, and as we all know, the, the day one reviews weren't particularly brilliant, but Intel has stuck to their guns and they've brought out multiple driver improvements, not only improving the stability of the cards, which are quite good now and they've also unlocked a ton of performance particularly in dx11 and older titles so great to see that intel are sticking by art graphics cards because a third maker in the gpu market is always a massive pro because ultimately it's more competition and if there's more competition it's better for us gamers. Couple this with the low prices of Arc products, particularly with the A750, I believe this is one of the best budget gaming graphics cards in 2024. And if you want to see a video I made on it, there will be one up there or there, I don't know where YouTube puts it. So are Intel Arc graphics cards unusable products? Certainly not, I've been using one for work for five months and if I'm gonna use it for work, I'm definitely going to recommend it. And it's great to see that Intel's first crack at dedicated graphics cards has been a relatively a big success. The RTX 2070 is e-waste. I kid you not, this is a comment I received on one of my TikToks and I actually burst out laughing when I read it. This is absolute nonsense. The sheer amount of people that write off old hardware is absolutely astonishing to me because if you just look at older GPUs like the RTX 2070, it's still an absolutely viable graphics card 
in 2024. It's still got relatively modern technology in it as well with DLSS and ray tracing, even though I wouldn't recommend ray tracing on a graphics card like that. The DLSS is certainly more important. But even if you dial back the years to, well, I don't know, the GTX 980 Ti, which I made a video on recently, that is still a very impressive graphics card all things considered. And this is something I like highlighting in my content. After all, older graphics cards is a huge portion of the content I cover here on the channel, just because I like to see what old hardware is capable of. Like the GTX 980 Ti I took a look at recently, that thing genuinely impressed me by just how resilient it still is. It can still play games like Hogwarts Legacy and Cyberpunk totally fine. And yeah, it's just like old hardware is still super viable for a lot of gamers out there. So I wouldn't say it annoys me, but more disappoints me to see that people are just absolutely writing off old hardware online because it's still quite viable. But it's not just GPUs, it's also processors as well, and probably they age quite a bit better than graphics cards. Older processors, particularly Haswell on the Intel side, like the i7-4770 and 4790K, those sorts of i7s have aged incredibly well yes they're still on ddr3 no you probably won't get any nvme support i know it was starting to roll out around back then but if you want a very budget gaming pc and you want to throw in something like an rtx 2060 super i mean you're going to be having an excellent budget gaming pc on your hands right there so the point i'm making is old hardware is certainly not e-waste particularly the rtx 2070 like that comment because yeah, it's still a very viable graphics card in 2024, and I made a video on it as well. So if you're happy with old PC hardware, who's to tell you otherwise? I guess this links into the previous point I just made, but I see a lot of people online making GPU sort of upgrading guides, so it's sort of the, if you've got a 3060 Ti, you should upgrade in two years, and if you've got a, I don't know, a GTX 1070, you should upgrade as soon as possible. And I think this, for the most part, is absolute nonsense. This is because you should only upgrade your gaming PC if one, you've got the spare money to do so, so you've got the budget to do it, and two, if you're not happy with your PC's current performance. It's very easy these days to get absolutely lost with the latest and greatest GPUs, and you want to go out and buy an RTX 4080 or a 4090, and a 7800X3D, when at the end of the day, you're happy with your PC's performance as it is. And this is one thing I've kind of learned over the past sort of year or so. I don't really need to upgrade my gaming PC because I'm happy with the performance. I've got an RTX 3080 10GB, and ever since I basically bought it back in 2022, people were telling me to upgrade it back then because it's only got 10GB of VRAM. This isn't a problem to me at all because I don't really run into any VRAM related problems and the only one I ran into was Jedi Survivor at 4K and I just enabled DLSS on quality and the VRAM problems went away. So why would I upgrade to an RTX 4080 Super when I don't need the gaming performance because I'm perfectly happy? And also my gaming PC has a Ryzen 5 7600 which I think pairs excellently with the RTX 3080 and for my gaming needs I don't see myself upgrading this gaming PC for quite a while. So yeah if you're happy with your gaming PC's performance and someone's telling you to upgrade online you don't need to listen to them because at the end of the day you're happy and that's what matters with PC gaming. Everyone has different expectations and in fact that brings me on to my next point. PC gaming is so vast you can have a different set of expectations. So what I expect from my gaming PC performance and experience may differ for you. Maybe you want 120 FPS at all times, even in AAA story games, or maybe you're cool with 60 or maybe even 30 FPS in story games. And the truth of the matter is, that is totally fine and no one can tell you otherwise. Personally, I aim for at least 60 FPS in story-driven games. And in competitive games, which I don't really play that much anymore, I aim for at least 120 FPS. But these are my sort of expectations from a gaming PC. Yours may obviously differ. So if you need 360 FPS in competitive games, no one's to tell you otherwise. So there's people online, particularly on Twitter, that are saying 
everyone needs at least 90 FPS in said game at 4K to have a good gaming experience or just speaking utter nonsense because not everyone has those expectations and I grew up in the Xbox 360 era of games and the PS2 slightly as well and a lot of those titles were running at 30 FPS and dropping below that a lot of the time and yeah we were totally fine with it back then obviously standards move on but even if I was playing a game at 30 FPS I reckon I could probably get used to it it wouldn't be that great for me but yeah I could I could probably stomach it anyways frame time is more important than average frame rate anyway because I like a consistent frame rate so I'd rather have a consistent 30 FPS than a 60 FPS that is just jumping all over the place if that makes sense. So this has probably come across as a bit of a rant video and if I'm honest I kind of needed to get this off my chest because I just see horrid takes particularly on Twitter or X is what it's called now and TikTok. It's like a lot of people have gotten stuck into the sort of the mindset that if you don't have an RTX 4090 and a 7800 X3D your gaming PC is totally worthless. When the fact of the matter is, if you're happy with your gaming PC and you have fun while playing games, your gaming PC is definitely worth... I don't know where I'm going with that. Your gaming PC is definitely worth something as you get enjoyment and value out of it and that is what matters the most. So I thought I should have shared these common PC gaming myths and my two cents worth on them because yeah, I just like calling out absolute rubbish on the internet. I feel like common sense has kind of gone the way of the dodo. But at least you know now you can call out this rubbish as well. So if you want to watch some sensible graphics card content, or it might be a bit silly considering that I made it, there are two videos right there. And I'll catch you in the next one.